The axillary brachial plexus block is an extremely effective and reliable technique for anesthetizing the distal upper limb. It's especially well suited for hand, wrist, and forearm indications, and in this video we'll discuss the anatomy, sonoanatomy, and technique for blocking the brachial plexus at the level of the axilla. This block is performed at the distal end of the brachial plexus, right after the cords have given rise to the individual branches. Here we see the axilla as viewed from the front, with the arm abducted to the left. The clavicle and chest wall are on the right or medial side, and the pec major and minor muscles have been cut and reflected back to reveal the axillary artery and brachial plexus. Let's focus here. This will represent the location and orientation of our ultrasound transducer. You'll see that we're centered over the axillary artery and a number of nerve branches. Anterior to the neurovascular structures lie the coracobrachialis muscle and the short head of the biceps. Posterior and deep to the neurovascular structures lie two muscles that share a so-called conjoint tendon. These muscles are the latissimus dorsi and the teres major. The conjoint tendon will be an important sonographic landmark when we scan. We'll also be able to see the individual nerve branches at this location. The median nerve is here, superficial, and on the same side as the coracobrachialis. The ulnar nerve is also superficial, but on the other side of the artery, above the conjoint tendon. The musculocutaneous nerve usually takes off early from the lateral cord and veers away from the artery, traveling through the coracobrachialis muscle before emerging between the biceps and coracobrachialis. Also pictured here is the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. This is a branch of the medial cord and travels close to the axillary artery for a time before emerging to supply the skin of the medial forearm and distal arm. We often don't appreciate this nerve on the ultrasound scan. Okay, what's missing? Yeah, the radial nerve. Well, that's because in this view, it runs deep to the axillary artery, just superficial to the conjoint tendon. The axillary vein has also been removed in this figure. To be complete, there are two more nerves pictured here that are relevant to blocking the upper limb. This is the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, an early branch of the medial cord that is far enough away from the neurovascular bundle at this location that we miss it with the axillary brachial plexus block. It supplies, not surprisingly, the skin of the medial arm down to the elbow. And this is the intercostal brachial nerve, which is not a part of the brachial plexus, but innervates the upper portion of the medial arm close to the axilla. We won't discuss block techniques for these cutaneous nerves here, but check out the link in the description for a video on how to easily and safely block these nerves with landmark and ultrasound techniques. The patient should be supine with their head turned away and the arm abducted to 90 degrees and externally rotated. This block is easily performed from several angles and really comes down to personal preference and ergonomics. The transducer should be positioned transversely on the medial arm and moved proximally until it runs into the pec major muscle. Your main sonographic landmark is the axillary artery, which you can see here pulsating. Clustered around the artery are several hyperechoic structures that are probably the nerves we're interested in. In most cases, the location of the brachial plexus branches will conform to the image here on the left. With the axillary artery centered, we usually find the median nerve at 10 o'clock, the ulnar nerve at 1 or 2 o'clock, and the radial at about 4 or 5 o'clock. The musculocutaneous nerve is found some distance away in the coracobrachialis muscle around 8 o'clock. There are variations, obviously, and we do find some of these combinations frequently. This highlights one of the core principles of this block. It's a perivascular technique, and if the only thing you do is get local anesthetic below and above the axillary artery, you'll get a solid block of the median, ulnar, and radial nerves. Here's a typical sonogram. We see the axillary artery centered and quite superficial. On the anterior side, we see the coracobrachialis and biceps muscles, and on the right is teres major, with its conjoint tendon running diagonally across the screen. We can see three structures that look like pieces of popcorn clustered around the artery. These are the median, ulnar, and radial nerves in their typical positions. Within the coracobrachialis muscle, we see the musculocutaneous nerve, with its characteristic bifascicular appearance. Here's another example. In this case, the musculocutaneous nerve appears quite close to the axillary artery. We do see an axillary vein here too. Note again that all the nerves, and specifically the radial, are located superficial to the conjoint tendon. If you don't see the conjoint tendon, you've likely drifted too distal along the arm, and you run the risk of the radial nerve diving deep toward the humerus. Here's what that looks like. Here we see our axillary artery and a very clear radial nerve. We can also see the profunda artery starting to branch off. We can clearly see teres major and the diagonal conjoint tendon. As the transducer moves distally along the arm, we lose that clear tendon, and at the same time the radial nerve and profunda artery dive deep toward the humerus. At this point, the radial nerve is far enough away from the axillary artery that local anesthetic might not get to it. For that reason, always keep the probe high enough in the axilla to maintain that crisp diagonal conjoint tendon in view. Once you're happy with the image, the needle is inserted in plane from the anterior lateral aspect. 
In order to reliably block all four nerves, we recommend depositing local anesthetic in three locations. First, we'll inject 10 mils deep to the artery, next to the radial nerve. Then we'll come back, redirect, and place 10 mils of local superficial to the artery to anesthetize the median and ulnar nerves. It's often necessary to do some careful hydrodissection with saline or local to peel the nerves off the artery and keep them safe from needle trauma. Finally, we'll withdraw almost back to the skin and then redirect in a steep trajectory to place 5 mils in the fascial plane next to musculocutaneous. Okay, let's look at how this is done. We see the needle approaching deep to the artery. Some gentle hydrodissection with saline establishes a plane lifting the artery off the conjoint tendon. We switch to local and deposit 10 mils there. Then we redirect and nudge the needle up to the artery below the median nerve. Some hydrodissection here lifts the nerve off the artery. We advance slightly to make sure that local reaches the ulnar nerve, with a total of 10 mils on top of the artery. And finally, we click into the fascial plane that holds the MC nerve and deposit our last 5 mils here. Axillary brachial plexus block is an excellent choice for distal upper limb surgery, hand, wrist, and forearm. The bones, muscle, and soft tissues of the mid and distal arm are also covered, but keep in mind that unless you deliberately seek out and block the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, you may have unblocked skin on the medial arm down to the medial epicondyle of the elbow. Here are some tips for axillary brachial plexus block. First, while it's fun to identify and block each individual nerve, remember that for median, ulnar, and radial, a perivascular injection works perfectly and has done so long before ultrasound. Just make sure you get sufficient local both above and below the artery and you'll anesthetize those three nerves. If you do want to identify each nerve and it's not all that clear in the axilla, try tracing the nerves back from their predictable locations further distal on the upper arm. Here's the median nerve traveling from the antecubital fossa up to the axilla. It stays glued to that brachial artery. Here's the ulnar nerve by the medial epicondyle at the elbow. It appears to hang off the brachial fascia all the way up to join the axillary artery. Here's the radial nerve by the distal humerus. As we track proximally, it falls into the spiral groove of the humerus and winds posteriorly until it rises up to join the axillary artery in the axilla. There's our old friend, the conjoint tendon. Musculocutaneous is usually not hard to see, but if it's not obvious, dynamic scanning will show it traveling in the fascial plane within coracobrachialis. We do need to be wary of the axillary vein or veins. It doesn't take much pressure from the transducer to collapse these thin walled vessels. I'm a fan of the bounce technique. Releasing and applying pressure with the transducer gives you an instant appreciation for where the veins are. It also helps to identify non-compressible nerves from surrounding soft tissue.